So the Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses have been out for a little while now and I've mostly seen them featured as camera glasses. But what if I told you that the camera is actually the least impressive feature and that these are way smarter than you think? Let's ramble. Hold up, things go well when I pull up. They all on me like at once. Hey, what's up guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. So these are the Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses. Now, I have to be honest, when these were first launched a few months ago, I wasn't super interested. I mean, we've seen camera glasses before. We've had the Snapchat spectacles, and that was kind of a flop. So when these Ray-Ban Metas first came out, I was like, yeah, you know, maybe I'll give them a try at some point, but not right now. But I kept seeing these things pop up on my feeds. Some fellow creators were really enthusiastic about them, so I caved and I picked up a pair to see what the fuss was about. And even when I did finally order them, I still thought I was ordering some camera glasses with a few extra little features. But man, was I wrong. These glasses are so much more than just camera glasses, and the best part is that they're only now starting to reach their full potential by means of some really impressive firmware updates and beta programs. But before we get into that, let's have a quick look at these things and cover some of the basic features because I have to admit, they're actually pretty cool. The first thing you'll notice, and that is also one of the reasons I eventually did decide to pick these up, is that they look identical to a pair of regular Ray-Bans. They come in two versions, the Wayfarers and the Headliners. I went for the black Wayfarers because those are actually the Ray-Bans I'm used to wearing, and I'll put them side by side for you here so you can see how similar they actually are. This is the first time smart glasses don't look super dorky or over the top, but rather like normal sunglasses that you would wear anyway. Even the case looks like a regular Ray-Ban case. Only upon closer inspection, you'll notice a few differences, most notably the ring that lights up on the front because this case actually charges your sunglasses and extends the total battery life, kind of like an AirPods case. The case itself charges via USB-C here at the bottom. I got the black ones with the green lenses. Ideally, I would have picked the transition lenses, you know, but unfortunately they were not available here in Europe. That does make filming inside a little trickier. I feel like a bit of a tool wearing sunglasses inside and those transition lenses turn clear as soon as you're not in bright light. So that would have been awesome, but what are you gonna do? Anyway, I'm actually pretty impressed with the basic functions of these glasses. The 12 megapixel camera actually delivers a pretty good image and even inside which generally means low light conditions the image looks pretty decent hey google turn on the studio You can use these to stream directly to Facebook and Instagram. Personally, I'm not really interested in that. As a creator, I was mostly interested in using them as a sort of a POV style camera. In the past, whenever I wanted POV shots and they had to be hands-free, like shots of me playing with the kids, putting away luggage on a plane or driving a car, something like that, I had to get creative and use little action cameras like the Insta360 Go, which I would either mount somewhere or wear it on myself to somehow get that POV shot. But those shots never really captured the POV experience quite right. With these glasses, you do get an almost perfect POV experience. I do say almost perfect because the camera sits on the top left-hand side of the glasses, not dead in the center, so it does not quite film exactly what you see, and it does take a bit of figuring out how to tilt your head to get the framing just right. But other than that, this is as close as it gets to getting an actual POV shot, completely hands-free, so that's really super useful for me. That alone would have made these glasses worth it because they aren't really that much more expensive than regular Ray-Bans. Now, I have my theories about how this is possible, but we'll get to that later. You press once to take a quick snapshot and you can start a video by long pressing the same button. Every time you open the app, it'll ask you to import the footage that you shot since last time you opened the app. This process is really smooth and you can then easily find your footage on the camera roll. The five microphones on these glasses do an incredible job capturing the audio of your surroundings, so much so that it's actually usable in my videos. I do have one pretty massive gripe with the camera, or actually two. One is that it has a 60 second record limit and the other is that it can only shoot vertical. I mean, I get it. These were made for Facebook and Instagram. So we're looking at 60 second vertical content mostly. 
But even then, the 60 second record limit kinda sucks. I don't usually blindly upload whatever I shoot for 60 seconds. Usually, we shoot more footage and then edit that down to a nice, coherent 60 second clip. So the record limit doesn't make any sense to me. The 32 gigs of internal storage means you could film for like an hour, and I really hope they remove the record limit in a future firmware update. A much bigger gripe for me though is the fact that it can only shoot vertical. I create mainly long form horizontal content, much like this YouTube video, and I would absolutely love using these glasses for that as well. It would make them infinitely more useful to me as a creator. I'm not sure whether that can be done by firmware updates, I would assume so, and I do really hope they will let us shoot horizontal as well. What I did not expect when I ordered these is for the speakers to actually be this good. There are two tiny speakers located in the arms of the sunglasses right above your ear and they actually sound really decent. It's almost like wearing AirPods with the pass through on so you can hear music but also be aware of what's happening around you. The crazy thing is that at half volume, which is loud enough to enjoy some music, people around you can't hear a thing. When you put the volume all the way up to your surroundings, it'll sound like someone is listening to music using earbuds. But they're not just good for listening to music, they're actually great for making phone calls as well. The speakers in combination with the five internal microphones actually make for a very clear and crispy call on both sides. I think I actually prefer these over a pair of buds for making phone calls. All right, so all of this is pretty cool and in my opinion, already more than justifies the purchase. But I told you at the beginning of the video that this is not what makes these glasses so impressive. What really blew my mind in a way I did not see coming is the AI capabilities of these glasses. Out of the box, they already came with their own built-in smart assistant, kind of like Siri, but instead of saying, hey, you know who, you'll say, hey, Meta, and you can give it instructions for things like starting a recording, playing some music, or sending a message through WhatsApp or some other apps. You could even ask it simple things like the weather. But it wasn't until Meta released an update through its beta program that my mind was really blown. This update instantly turns these glasses from kind of smart glasses, I guess, to holy crap, this is the future. Marquez Brownlee posted a video in which he shows you can ask Meta questions about things you see in front of you. Hey Meta, look and tell me how to save this plant. The plant appears to be a Dracaena, which is known for its durability and low maintenance requirements. To save it, make sure it's getting enough indirect sunlight and water it sparingly, allowing the soil to dry out between waterings. In other words, it utilizes the camera to see and analyze what's in front of you and combines that information with the AI capabilities of the assistant to come up with some truly mind-blowing results. You can hold up an item of clothing and ask where you can buy it and how much it costs. Literally, the sky is the limit. I wish I could show you myself, but unfortunately, the early access program for this new AI feature is only available in the US for now. I tried using a VPN, but that didn't work. I mean, this is meta and they probably know where I am better than I do. Which brings me to the one big caveat. This is meta. And what this looks like to me is that we're basically wearing a data collection device on our faces. Maybe that also explains why these glasses are relatively inexpensive. Maybe we're paying with our data like we're used to from Meta. And I guess that's the dilemma we're faced with when we're looking at these glasses. The potential is clearly incredible. I mean, I'm really super impressed with what I've seen so far in terms of the camera AI combo, and I can only imagine the vast amount of applications this could be used for. But are we ready and willing to accept that we're essentially collecting data every time we use these glasses? I would really love to hear your thoughts on this. Let me know in the comments. And guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it one of these. It really does help the channel. Subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for some links to videos you might also wanna watch.